Are the new versions really new? You might think they are, if you believe all of the propaganda. But do we really need an average of one to two new translations every year? Do these new versions really contain more accurate readings, which were not available to the translators of the King James Bible? In 1540, the radical Catholic order known as the Jesuits was formed to destroy the Protestant Reformation. They would release an English Bible translation in 1610. It was known as the Jesuit Dewey Reims Bible. One year later, the King James Bible was completed in 1611. The 1610 Dewey Reims translation failed miserably and was never taken seriously by any real student of the Bible. So how do the new versions fit into this? They are promoted as being from newer research that was not available to the translators of the King James Bible. This is a lie, and I will now show you the proof. In Luke 2.33, the King James Bible says, Joseph and his mother. The 1610 Dewey Reims says, his father and mother. This false Bible makes Joseph the father of Jesus instead of God. So how do the modern versions translate this verse? Here you can see that the New American Standard Version uses the same word as the 1610 Jesuit Bible. The recovery version says father. The New Revised Standard Version says Father. The English Standard Version says Father. The New International Version says Father. And even the New 2010 Common English Bible says Father. In 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, the King James Bible clearly identifies Jesus as God manifest in the flesh. The wicked 1610 Jesuit Bible removes the name God from this verse. The New Common English Bible follows the 1610 Dewey Reims by omitting God and replacing it with He. The ESV says He and not God. The New Revised Standard Version says He. The NIV says He. The New American Standard Version says he, and the recovery version also says he instead of God. The King James Bible warns about oppositions of science falsely so called in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 20. The 1610 Dewey Reims replaces the word science with knowledge. The ESV says knowledge. The CEB says knowledge. The NASV says knowledge. The NIV says knowledge, and the recovery version also says knowledge instead of science. So the readers of these new corrupt versions are left with Bibles that contain no warnings about the oppositions of false sciences like evolution and global warming. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, the King James Bible gives a command for Christians to study. The Catholic 1610 Dewey Reims version removes the word study from this verse. The New Revised Standard Version also removes the command to study, as does the NIV, the Recovery Version, the CEB, the NASV, and also the English Standard Version removes the word study. The King James Bible tells Christians to confess their faults one to another in James chapter 5 verse 16. The horribly corrupt Jesuit Bible of 1610 tells people to confess their sins one to another. The process of auricular confession has led to the molestation of untold millions of women and children at the hands of Catholic 
priests. So what do the modern Bible versions say in James 5.16? The New International Version follows the 1610 Roman Catholic Dewey Reams version by changing faults to sins. The New American Standard Version also tells its readers to confess their sins to men. The ESV says to confess sins. The CEB says to confess sins. The Recovery Version says to confess sins. And the New Revised Standard Version also advises its readers to confess their sins to one another. Hopefully by now you have seen enough evidence to convince you that the supposedly new readings found in today's modern translations were in fact available to the translators of the King James Bible in 1611. The translators did not use these corrupt Roman Catholic scriptures. They were smart enough to realize that Joseph was not the father of Jesus in Luke 2.33. They knew that no true Greek text would eliminate the name of God from 1 Timothy 3.16. The King James translators also realized the dangers of science falsely so called in 1 Timothy 6.20. These men had a desire for the common man to be able to read God's word in his own language and they would never remove God's command to study from 2 Timothy 2.15. The translators in 1611 had seen the corruption of the confessing of sins to sinful priests in the Roman Catholic system. That is why God led them to say faults and not sins in James 5.16. These five corrupted Catholic scriptures have been refuted by King James Bible believers for over 100 years. And yet the new versions keep coming out containing these verses which all can be traced back to the Jesuit Dewey Reims translation. Why won't the new version committees fix these obvious errors? In March of 2011, another new NIV is scheduled to be released. I wondered if this new version would finally update the errors found over 400 years ago in the 1610 Dewey Reims translation. As I expected, the official website for the newest NIV revealed that the errors found in Luke 2.33, 1 Timothy 3.16 and 6.20, 2 Timothy 2.15 and James 5.16 had not been fixed. I wondered why. Later I was shown the reason. One of the translators named Dr. Paul Swarup is a visiting faculty at a Jesuit seminary in Delhi. Other new versions like the Common English Bible and the New Living Translation also have openly professing Jesuits and Catholics on their translation teams. Hello, I'm Doug Moo, Chair of the Committee on Bible Translation, the body of scholars who look after the text of the New International Version of the Bible. As a committee, our task is to translate faithfully the words of God as we find them recorded in the original languages into contemporary English. Please notice how this man uses the term original to deceive his viewers into thinking that the NIV translators have access to the original autographs when they do not. I want to tell you briefly what the NIV stands for and also to introduce you to the forthcoming update of the text. We know what the NIV stands for and we know that your updated text can be traced back to the 1610 Jesuit Bible. Now listen as he tries to compare the NIV to the King James Bible. In 1611, the King James Version of the Bible sought to solve this problem for the readers of its time. The King James Version tried to recreate the balance of priorities found in the original Greek and Hebrew text. But just like the original documents, the King James Version was unable to escape the effects of time. Here this man smugly states that the King James Bible is no longer any good for today's reader. He doesn't care about the millions of Christians around the world who are blessed on a daily basis out of the pages of their King James Bibles. But I guess we should understand that Dr. Moo is in the business of selling Bibles. He wants to convince you of your need for another new version. So in the last century, a number of excellent new English Bible translations emerged, each with its own particular priorities. 
In the last century, a number of excellent New English Bible translations emerged. What made these new versions excellent? Was it because they reintroduced the ancient Jesuit verse perversions from 1610 into the Protestant churches without an outcry from the pulpits? And if there are so many excellent new versions available today, why do we need another one? Next you will hear this man lie by saying that the NIV mirrors the balance of priorities held by the translators of the King James Version. But since it was first introduced as a complete text in 1978, the new international version has stood as the modern pioneer of a different approach, one that mirrors the balance of priorities held by the translators of the King James Version 400 years ago. The King James translators had access to the 1610 Dewey Reams verse perversions and they rejected them. The NIV translators did not reject the corrupt readings. This man is flat out lying to you. The NIV aims to recreate as far as possible the reading experience of the original audience. Its goal is to combine in one translation transparency to the original documents and ease of understanding, refusing to prioritize one above the other. Again, he deceives the viewers by using the word original. This man has never seen even one of the original autographs. He has no basis for comparing the NIV to the original documents or to the reading experience of the original audience. Built upon this philosophy, the New International Version has experienced much the same reaction in the church and beyond as its beloved predecessor, the King James Version. As I have clearly demonstrated in this video, the King James Bible is not the beloved predecessor of the NIV. The Roman Catholic Jesuit 1610 Dewey Reams Version is the predecessor of the NIV. I wish you could attend a committee session to see just how careful we are as we try to figure out how to communicate God's unchanging word to English speakers around the world. This lying hypocrite says he wants to communicate God's unchanging word to English speakers around the world and yet he is promoting a wicked new version which has been changed to please the politically correct feminist speech of the lost world. This video was made as a plea to Bible-believing Christians around the world. God blessed His church and used us for His glory when we were all united under one holy Bible. In this year of 2011, let us celebrate the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible. The new versions have been claiming to fix the King James Bible for over 100 years now, and yet they still cannot claim perfection. It is time for Bible believers all over the world to unite under the authority of one Bible and to loudly denounce all of the corrupt new Vatican versions.